new music. This is Ted Nugent, and we got to welcome you to the new music. In a little while, we're going to have some interviews. We're going to tell you about everything you ever wanted to know about rock and roll. We're going to tell you about the backstage and front stage. We're talking about honesty. We were talking about getting ready to get the gig, getting ready to go home from the gig, getting ready to cruise on the highway, doing the my way and all the Bible. Yeah. We were getting yeah. the streets. We were talking about We were talking about So come around and dig it with me, baby. <laughs> OK, OK, wait a minute. Calm yourself down, Ted. We want to talk about. It's not often that you see a rock star living out a scene from a James Bond movie, but for Detroit's Ted Nugent, it's just part of another day in the life of rock and roll. I mean, how many guys can do that in a pinch? <laughs> Ted Nugent, or the Nuge as he's known by his devout following, is the definitive fun-loving touring maniac. We last met with the Gonzo Rocker in the fall, backstage at Maple Leaf Gardens. We found him to be such an intriguing personality that we went to London, Ontario a couple of weeks ago to take in a typical day on the road. Since we last saw him, he shaved off the beard and looked more like he'd just come off a hunting expedition than a two-hour drive from Toledo, Ohio. But when we caught him backstage, he was in full battle dress, ready for his nightly assault. Remember the first tune you ever played on the guitar? Yeah, I do. I remember. I played it once and it made me so sick I haven't played it since. Got all kinds of new songs. Got a song uh, called uh, Bound and Gag that goes. Uh, You know, it's all about Smith and Wesson's and Colt 45s. Well, I'm talking to you loud because I got my uh, Pygmy Peter earplugs in right now. Yeah, people say that your hearing is going. Is that true? Vicious rumor. Uh, does it ever get to you, though, with all those amps on warp drive up there on stage? It sure does, and I, I want it more. Nugent carries enough equipment to make even the most conditioned of rock fans' ears bleed. He conducts lengthy sound checks, but sometimes manages to turn a tedious operation into an enjoyable experience. Very able to be some nice people, some real nice girls or something, uh, around the sound check, so you can make good friends. You know, I have friends. I wouldn't deny myself no friendship. And so you meet these nice friends, and you take them back and do friendly things. And uh, then you uh, prepare yourself for the night, and you come back, and you rock and roll some more. And you jump on stage and you plunge, you plunge your being into this intensification gyration process that is unparalleled in mankind. Now, wait a minute, hold it, stop for a second. We're talking about friends here, otherwise known as groupies in some 
well, locations. Now, you deal with these people before the concert? Well, certainly you gotta establish, uh, you gotta establish momentum, you know? <laughs> you, got, you don't want, you wanna get around, listen. I'm only one man, you know? I gotta, I gotta get around to as many friends as I can. And I don't really consider them groupies, because ours are much cleaner. Uh, but whatever you want to call them, we like, you know, we like to, we like to mingle, you know? I mean, I ain't in it for the money. But before the concert? Certainly. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, that primes you, you know? It's like a free lubrication process, you know? There's so many people who are in what you are in are, are drugged out, coked out, stoned <laughs> out, whatever, but you live your life clean. <laughs> I know, those saps. They're saps. They're saps. They ain't getting out of it what I'm getting out of it. They're saps. Tisk, tisk. You checked into this hotel under the name of F. Bear from the yeah. Bear Archer Company, right. Archery Company. Mm. Is that reflecting on your love for hunting with a bow and arrow? Yeah, well, Fred's a good friend of mine. You know, Fred owns the uh, world's largest archery company, the Bear Archery Company. And he and I hunt together. We hunt turkeys together in the spring. And uh, I know nobody in rock and roll knows who Fred Bear is. Of course, now whoever sees this TV show, I'm usually in room 75. Uh, no, uh, anybody who sees a TV show now will know where, how to find my how to find me, but uh, that's okay. We got a physical screener down the hallway. We'll make sure we only get the prime items. <laughs> you are uh, a great white hunter, I understand. Yeah, in fact, in fact, now we got real good sound, real good picture. You are looking at the new world's record holder of the number one American bison ever shot with the bow and arrow. You got one with yeah, the bow and arrow? The, uh, well, I've gotten two with the bow and arrow, but the one I shot this last December in Texas is the new world's record. It weighed 2,100 pounds. It was about an eight-year-old bull, and uh, he had a, just a, he was just massive, man. And uh, we were hunting elk in Texas, north, northwest Texas, and I uh, came upon this herd of buffalo, and I had a permit, and I made about a five-hour stalk on him from the mountains. We were on horseback, and uh, I, I dismounted and came upon this one cliff and come down behind this herd. It was a herd of solitary bulls. There was uh, five bulls in the herd, and uh, I arrowed him. I, I hit him at about 50 yards. Why don't you use a gun? Because I know that you have one of the world's great gun collections. Yeah, well, I also enjoy firearms, too, very much, you know. But uh, there's a very special relationship with uh, my predatorship when I uh, hunt with the bow and arrow uh, that is finely tuned to my natural role in the environment and the sneaking, the the uh, uh, cat-like approach you have to take on a big game animal. Because of the bow and arrow, I mentioned I killed the buffalo at 50 yards. That's a long shot. I usually don't take a shot that long. But, the but damn, that's but also close to get. The damn thing was so big, you know, I couldn't miss. You know, he had a lug on him the size of a Volkswagen. Ted's image is that of the axe-wielding macho backwoodsman. Whatever he does, he does to extremes. His lifestyle, combined with his love for guns, has led people to associate him with violence. After a recent concert in Seattle, the press wrote that Sick took over concert in one of the worst situations measured by sick, drunk, and drug people that they'd seen in six years. In Seattle, in Seattle there were 16,000 people rock and rolling, smiling, laughing, screaming, boogie woogie, and she be bop boop lamb boop be bop boop lamb boop just nonstop all night long. And one jerk broke his neck. What does that mean? Nothing. It means nothing. Yeah. No violence, no violence. Yeah. Do you realize the influence that you have on these people, though? Do you, do you ever sit back and say, Wait Certainly. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a victim and a perpetrator of the ricochet factor. I mean, I get up there, and I know that rock and roll is driving me crazy, and I love it, you know, it's good for me. And in the process of driving myself crazy, it drives them crazy, and the crazier they get, I see they're going crazy, and I go, oh, yeah, and I start getting crazier. <laughs> and they go, oh, yeah, and they go crazy, and I go, yeah, and I go crazier. And the snowball effect is like... Just remember, you, you can't, can't keep, keep a good, good dog, dog off your leg. leg. Remember what I tell you.
Still to come tonight on the new music, Stevie Winwood, Ronnie Spector, and more from the concerts for Campuchia.